Don't drop your curtain. Don't lock your front door. Don't play coy with a string anymore. I come alive in the evening. I have you back by the dawn. Paranoid when you're sleeping, so you can sleep when I'm gone. I huff and I'll puff a blue this house of cards down. Then the thing enough till enough comes around. And how's it going down there? Then you go to the Eastman. How you feeling down there? Have you found salvation? Adam Baldwin. I uh, am a 35-year-old father of two uh, who uh, sings songs and plays guitar for a living. Uh, I grew up in uh, a little uh, suburb called Fall River. It was uh, a lovely spot to grow up back, back then. You know, it was uh, lots of kids around in my neighborhood. It was great. I always knew I was adopted. Growing up in a, in a house with I, I know I know this because I can say it because I have my own kids and I can see parts of myself in, in both of them and I can I identify with them and so when they get upset about something or, or when they love something I, I can see where it comes from and I can uh, empathize with it and I, I think that my folks probably struggled raising me because there was a lot of uh, emotions uh, that I would uh, be displaying that, that they couldn't quite put their finger on, you know, and I think it led to a lot of frustration from them that, that I had a hard time with. I, I don't fault them for it. They, my folks were great. They, they did their best and uh, and two lovelier people I couldn't have wound up with, but it's it's got to be hard looking at, at a kid that you, you just don't quite understand. I picked up a guitar when I was in grade 11. My folks got me uh, some lessons for Christmas because I'd been asking them, uh, asking them for a guitar. So they rented me a, a Stratocaster knockoff and got me four lessons, I think two months worth of lessons. this I came across this crowd of people and I recognized Tim Jim Baker uh, I was a big uh, I was a big fan of Matt Mays and El Torpedo so I, I recognized him on the street and I, and I, I became very excited and I, I sort of said hey you're Tim Jim Baker and introduced myself to him and then I was telling him how big a fan of Matt uh, I was and, and he was kind of pointed over to the doorway and there and, and Matty was standing there holding a video camera. 
Matt was one of the first people who really encouraged me to write, and he let me open shows for him when, uh, you know, I didn't have any records made. I hardly had songs written, and he's everything that I imagine a big brother would, would be like. You know, he, he took me under his wing, and he, I learned a lot from him. He's a great songwriter, obviously, and and I admire the way he crafts his uh, his songs and. And, uh, and I also think he's just an excellent performer, you know. Uh, there's an art to that as well. It's not just standing up there and playing your guitar, you know. And uh, he, uh, uh, he, he's, been, he's been great to watch over the last 15 years or so that I've been playing with him. And uh, I've tried to learn from how he's evolved. probably 19 or 20 when I started uh, using and uh, it just it it, uh, it paired well with all of the booze that was around in in, uh, in my line of work I, you know I was I think I made six, 60 bucks maybe a week playing music at a, at a bar called Tribeca and I would wash dishes there for another 30 bucks and so uh, you know I was making $90 a week uh, but I was, uh, you know, living out my dream. And uh, anyway, you spend that much time in bars, it's just, uh, it, was, it was all over the place. And uh, I had, you know, my own struggles with uh, uh, depression and anxiety and stuff. And that's, you know, cocaine made me feel like a million dollars. It all, uh, you know, uh, all that anxiety disappeared. I was coming home from Moncton, and uh, I went out and found some some bad drugs, and I did too much of them. And when I heading home, I just I I started to panic, and it, it was a symptom of whatever bad drugs I had used. I just started freaking out, and uh, the paranoia that whatever that powder was gave me, I I just had this overwhelming feeling that I had to call everybody that I knew and tell them that I had a problem. So the first call was to my mother, and then the next call was to Matt. And uh, we had we had some shows the next week I was supposed to fly to Ontario or something for, and I just said, you know, but I, I gotta take a minute here and, and figure myself out. And of course, you know, he was very understanding and uh, happy for me. When I sobered up, I can remember thinking, what the hell did I do? What have I done? <laughs> you know, then it was real. It was like, there it was. It was out there in the open. There's no taking that back, you know. You, you, can't, you can't just say, ah, I was just, I was just messing around, you know, especially to your mother. Cocaine is an ugly, ugly drug, but in that instant, it screwed my brains up enough, and I got so paranoid that it, 
I, I had to have conversations with people that I, I probably otherwise wouldn't have had. I couldn't have admitted that I had a problem were it not for the drug. Uh, I have a, a better relationship with myself than I did uh, when I was younger. The greatest thing that I ever did in my life, I think the thing that sort of saved my whatever sanity I have left uh, was uh, going to a, an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting or a Cocaine Anonymous meeting and hearing people talk about their addictions to whatever it was. There were, there were uh, alcoholics there, there were cocaine users there, there were people that couldn't stop shopping. There, uh, but whatever the, whatever the thing that they were addicted to was, you could substitute all, all the things they were describing. They, they were talking about me. When I realized that, that I wasn't unique, that I wasn't this uh, helpless case that I thought I was, I, I, there was a, a sort of a comfort in all that misery, I guess, you know? And, uh, and I, I just sort of grew to understand that, uh, you know, all of us have, have some sort of uh, thing going on uh, that, that, that can lead us to uh, addiction or, or, or whatever. And coming out of those meetings, I learned, I, I just learned how to cope with life a, a whole lot better. My life has been enriched incredibly by the people that have just by luck of the draw have, have um, flown into my orbit or I've flown into theirs and uh, they give me a reason to just try to be a, a better person and everybody that, that I, uh, you know, uh, associate with has, has made me a better person. My family's my entire reason to get up in the morning and and it's the reason I continue to pursue my career. It's why they, they're why I write songs. I, I want my kids and my partner Jesse to have a, a good, comfortable life. And Jesse and I have struggled for a lot of years. It's, it's hard to do this. For my kids, it's, it's important to me that they know that they should dream. They, they should dream as, as large as they want. That's just essentially why I, I keep at it, because I, I want to prove to myself that I can prove it to them, I guess. I wanted to be Bruce Springsteen. I wanted that. I wanted to play stadiums all the, the, the entire world over. Th there's a, a, a great danger in comparing yourself to other uh, artists or, or other people because it, 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 doing that for me, it, it's, it stole my ability to enjoy what, what I was experiencing at the time when I was, when I was 22 years old and uh, making money playing, playing in a band. I couldn't enjoy it because I wanted, I wanted more and I wanted it for myself. And I, I've only learned in the last couple of years that, that the minute you concentrate on, on just making the best art that you can make, everything else falls in place. If, if, if I was writing songs to get on the radio, then I was gonna fuck it up. That's just, I was, it's, it's a fool's errand. Salvation? Mm -hmm. What does that word really mean for you in your life? It's uh, that word. I, I, you know, it's it's the endeavor to uh, free yourself from the um, all of the th the things that I have created in my own head through a, a mix of sort of uh, uh, you know a, a genetic history of of mental illness and just my own perceived shortcomings. That's something that I'll be working towards for the rest of my life. I think everybody should, you know. I don't know if, if there ever is like a, a real peace uh, in that. In endeavoring to do so, my life has gotten better. It, it just has. Um, so I, I figure that's the, uh, it's, it seems to be working thus far. And, and if, uh, 
if I don't make it all the way, at least I haven't uh, I haven't plummeted uh, quite as far as as I could have, you know. It's 